Welcome to the Butterfly Effect, Stage 11. Yesterday, we saw Peter Sagan get his first win in over a year in incredible fashion. Today, we see Arnold Dumar get number four of this year's 2020 Giro. It was well let out, Francis de Jour squad. I like to bring you guys back 7K before we enter the city. When we get into the city, it's UAE, UAE Emirates doing an amazing job. I'm going to point out the next picture here that I'll show for you guys. They're at 6.2K. They're doing a left-hand turn. And as they come out of the turn, there's an exposed pole, sign pole right there. That just freaked me out when I'm watching. I thought for sure I would see a bunch of the riders from the field swing just a little bit wider and possibly clip that pole or go straight into it. It was amazing that they missed it. UAE Emirates kept drilling it on the front. They were doing a well lead out in a very, very technical city finish, okay? So the fight is really between UAE Emirates and Israel Startup Nation. They're trading off pools left and right. One team taking over, the next team taking over. You'll see Francis de Jour come into the picture just before 2K to go. Arnold DeMar has three teammates in front of him. This is crucial to take it from 3K from before 2K, so really he's starting, his team's starting back there at about two and a half. You don't see him in the picture yet, but they're coming up the left side of the road about two and a half. And his first lead out guy, the first of three, is pulling somewhere between two and a half to under 2K to go. And they'll take the, fr the front briefly. And you'll see Peter Sagan with Bonart, who's actually his, he's, Peter Sagan only has one guy with him, okay? So he doesn't have a full team. And you'll see that Peter Sagan and Bernard are up there next to the Francis de Jure chain, trained briefly before UAE Emirates comes back to the front and takes it again. Now, Miles Scottson, he takes it from 1K and drills it all the way to 4K to go. That was an amazing amount of effort. 600 meters at the front, all out into the last left-hand corner and still drills it out of the left-hand corner until you hit 400 meters to go. The next Frances de Jure rider takes the front. He doesn't accelerate. He doesn't have the form to really increase the speed. But most important, when you're doing a lead-out train, you can't lose speed. So he keeps the speed from 400 to just under 200 meters to go. And then Arnold Dumar does an amazing launch like we've already been seeing three stages before at this Giro for him. He wins the stage in, in great fashion. What you see when he crosses the line, if you stayed and watched a little bit more of the video, you'll see his race radio come out of his jersey pocket right after he crosses the line. If that had popped out during the sprint, who knows what it could have caused if it went into the chain, it caught into the spokes. Most likely it falls in the road, bounces around, bounces off everybody else's wheel and flicks its way all the way through the group. But you got to imagine that something might have happened if that radio pops out a little bit sooner. Arnold DeMar does a great job of taking the stage win. And I want you also to see that before he goes into the podium ceremony, he stays outside of the fencing so he can congratulate every one of his team. They did an amazing job. They rode all the way from start to finish. And really, it was a beautiful lead out. Now, if we go back to the beginning of the town, once you get through the dangerous parts and you really start seeing Sagan. Peter Sagan is working just with Bernard. He has no other teammates to help do a lead out. So this is really a tale on today's stage of UAE Emirates who did a, a great lead out. They really put in a good effort there. Uh, they didn't get the win, but no one's expecting the win right now with Arnold DeMar unless there's chaos, a crash or something or whatever, he gets stuck behind something. But nobody's gonna beat, if we come out of last corner and it's even, nobody's gonna beat Arnold DeMar at, at this Giro. Not with his form. So what they're hoping for is a little chaos. They don't get that. They still do a really good ride and a good result. Israel Startup Nation with Eric Zabel, same thing. He gets a good result at the finish. Both those teams will be happy with how, they, how it went. Peter Sagan with only one teammate, remember, he, they're actually working together and Bernard is taking him through the field and always keeping him at the front. Every time there's a little slow or exchanging of positions at the front, Bonard will never be in the wind, but just for a few seconds. You'll see him jump out to the left side or the right side. Oftentimes, he'll move up three, four spots. As soon as the group starts to slow again, he'll take Sagan up again. 
His main job is to stay close to the field, but slightly out so that Peter Sagan is always has a great draft and is in perfect position. Anytime there's some reshuffling, Bernard, the lieutenant, will just marshal him back up to a perfect spot. He, Bernard does an exceptional job. You guys got to really go back and watch this finish, especially from about the last 3K. Watch it many times so you can see what UAE Emirates does, what Israel Startup Nation does, and then keep your eye on, of course, Frances de Jure and the amazing ride that Bernard does for Peter Sagan. So Bernard is all by himself. Every time he's touching the wind, he'll touch it for a second, then he slots in. When you're on the side of the rider in front like this, this is Bernard, and this is probably the UAE Emirates team or maybe Israel Startup, the, he'll be right here. You're still getting a draft when you're on the side. It's not as beautiful as being right behind, but if he's here and his bars are not blocked, if no one else can get over, if someone else's handlebars can't get over his, he always has an exit. Every time when he exit and he, every time he needs to change position and move forward, he'll push the riders that are coming up on him like this over so that Sagan can follow his wheel like this. When they lose each other, which they will, and I'll show you that in some of the photos, is they'll lose each other briefly, but they know Sagan will know to go right if he can't follow him left, and they'll split like this and they'll meet back up again. Most important thing for Bernard to achieve is that when you go under 1K to go, he has to place Peter Sagan on one of the lead out trains, preferably on Arnold Dumar's wheel. And he ends up placing him near Fernando Gaviria, who's on Arnold Dumar's wheel. That's perfect. When the sprint starts with Arnold Dumar, Peter Sagan made one small mistake to go slightly right as the rider in front was dropping back. I believe he was the FDJ rider, was dropping back. And then he quickly, this is a split second that he has to make the decision that he went the wrong way to the right. Now he has to change back and go left, but that FDJ rider's dropping back fast, so he has to make that close. I guarantee you when those two wheels, when he crossed over from the right to the left, they had to be just millimeters between the front wheel of Sagan and the FDJ rider dropping back. Sagan does a great job. I'm sure he's happy with second. He would have... He wants to win. Everybody does. UAE Emirates wants to win. Israel Startup Nation wants to win. But Arnold DeMar was just that great today where he was going to be hard to beat if there wasn't mass chaos or some kind of crash. When you're racing in Italy, though, with all the chaos, with the sign that I told you about at the beginning of this, with the roundabouts where riders were actually missing the roundabout and taking the right turn instead of following the roundabouts at the beginning of the city. It is really chaos in Italy. Now I'll go back one other thing before I let you guys go. The motorcycle accident with Viviani. Guys, it's not really the motorcycle guy's fault. Could he have done better? We can all do better. But when you come into a roundabout like that where Viviani crashed, they go into the roundabout. They're doing almost the full circle followed by another hard right turn. So it's right into the roundabout, left all the way around, and then a hard right turn. As soon as I saw the front breakaway go through that particular roundabout, you knew there was gonna be trouble for the brake, or sorry, for the field of riders when they're so much larger than the brake. The motorcycle guy, you gotta forgive him. It was purely an accident. The motorcycle marshals do an amazing job. They're always intermixing with us riders while we're racing. I've never had a problem with the motorcycles crashing riders or something like that. The riders crash, the motorcycles are in there, they stop faster, they're bigger, their luggage on the side. It's pretty hard for them to navigate. So don't be mad at the motorcycle driver. I am a little upset at the officials though. When the motorcycle guy crashes one of the bikes, even if it's not his fault, if a motor crashes you, you should be able to use the motor to close the gap to get back up to the peloton. I think that's only fair. I don't want to blame anyone for that crash for sure, but fair is fair if a motorcycle crashes you. If an engine crashes you, an engine should be able to get you back to the peloton, is my belief. Good stage today at the finish. Arnold DeMar, another fourth, and his fourth stage win of this year is Gerald. Peter Sagan does great to finish second on his wheel and limit the damage for the, for the sprint points jersey. It was a great finish. Hope you enjoyed my take on the butterfly effect. Go back, check out those stages. Go, Sorry, go back, check out those last final kilometers. They're exciting to watch. I'll see you real soon.